Hello guys, we are excited to have you here. The team in SDET Biotechers working hard on this channel and we are eager to hear what you think. We will come up with more hacks in JMeter and new performance tool in upcoming future. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out any hacks video once it got released. In today's video, we will discuss one of the most common issues faced by performance tester in real world project, namely what is NFR and how to collect it. Let me provide an example to illustrate how non-functional requirements play a significant role in determining a product's performance. When you purchase a new car, you were excited to take a long drive. However, when you reach a hilltop, you noticed that the car was not accelerating as fast as you had hoped. This is an example of a non-functional requirement. There are a lot of products that fall in the market since they are not meeting the required performance of the product or any testing glitch that causes a significant impact on the product failure. Before performing any workload modeling for performance testing, it is important to grasp the NFR in depth. Workload modeling is the key here and we will discuss it in a future hack video. Let's take a look at the NFR in detail. A business requirement are split into two categories. One is functional requirement, another is non-functional requirement. Normally, functional requirement target what the system should do and non-functional requirement target how the system should do it. Let's take an example. When a customer register on our site, then a notification will send over to his or her email and phone number. This is the functional requirement of my application. Whereas the notification must be sent in two seconds after the registration. That means non-functional requirement describe how quickly the notification must be delivered to the customer in my application. Hope this example give more clarity on the difference about functional requirement and non-functional requirement. In this slide, we will discuss non-functional requirement. There are three main pillars that non-functional requirement target. The first one is usability. It means easy to interact with product. The second one is reliability, product vulnerable point and solution. The last important pillar is performance which signifies the speed of reaction. In non-functional requirement, some of the goals are time bound, like the response time of a page, request per second, resource utilization, right? Whereas some of the goals are load bound, like real world user load, throughput, etc. Some simple examples of non-functional requirement are the number of users handled by the application, page response time, number of requests processed by the application per unit time, CPU utilization, memory utilization, and error rate. We now have a thorough understanding of NFR requirement. Let's look at what are the key elements to keep in mind when collecting NFR data from the business. The key focus point while collecting these NFR details are infrastructure details, transaction details, scalability related data, workload related data, data related to response time and other matrices. Let's please examine each element in detail to understand this better in the further slides. Let's discuss infrastructure details. As part of NFR gathering, PT team is supposed to capture the configuration details of both production environment and performance testing environment. Let's see what are the key points we need to cover in infrastructure details. The key points are how many web servers, how many app server, is there a load balancer, what is the configuration, operating system of each server like OS version, Normally, the OS version are Solaris 9, AIX, Red Hat, 
Linux, right? How many database server this infrastructure is containing? Hardware configuration of each server like number of CPU, speed, memory. For example, 1.7 GHz processor with 64 MB cache like 16 GB memory, 100 GB hard disk, right? Support software on each server like with versions like a web of server, database server, weblogic 8.1, premium server, oracle 10g enterprise, right? Note that normally OS are Linux or Solaris because it is fast and secure. So you have in mind like who will give this infrastructure details to us. So the key contact point to get the infrastructure details is the infrastructure team of your organization. Let's discuss transaction details. As part of NFR gathering, PT team is supposed to capture list of performance critical transactions. What are the performance critical transactions are? Transactions which are executed frequently, transactions which are critical for business, transactions that are suspect to have high resource intensive requirement. Take an example of a Gmail application. You are having 1000 test cases to test the Gmail application. So what are the transactions we need to take into consideration while doing a performance test? Shall we take 1000 test cases? No. We don't consider all the test cases for performance testing, but probably 100 or 100 to 150 of them. So how we are segregating test cases based on which criteria to reduce from 1000 test cases to 100 or 150. So what do we do? We will filter for performance critical transaction and performance critical test cases. Filtering condition need to take into consideration when you are identifying the performance critical transaction. Let's discuss the first point. Transaction which are executed frequently. Take an example to understand this point. Like for banking application, following transactions are critical. So can you guys tell me what are the critical transactions for banking application? So the critical transaction might be account summary details, checking transaction history, balance transfer, login and logout. We have covered what are the critical transactions for a banking application. Let's look into the other side. What are the transactions which are not critical for a banking application? Those are change password, change username, change theme, order checkbook, open a new account. Doing everything is not possible, right? It required lot of effort and time. When you consider both sides of critical transaction and not critical transaction for banking application, there are lot of transaction. So what we need to do? We need to find out only the critical transaction and do a performance testing on top of that. An important point to take into consideration is that transaction which are critical for business even though they are not used all the time. Take example of open a saving account or open a FD or fixed deposit. So these are considered for performance testing because revenue is made from this not for withdrawals but from the deposits from the new accounts. So even though this number is very less, it does not happen frequently but we still need to consider for performance testing. Okay? There will be a one more condition to find out the critical transaction is that which transaction is directly proportional to money or grow your business those transactions are also considered as a critical transaction. That transaction need to be considered for performance need. Let's discuss the third point. Transactions that are suspect to have high resource intensive requirement. Let's understand with the example. Sometimes customer requested bank to provide the transaction history for last five years. Do you think? This example should see. This is not a frequently used transaction 
but it is highly resource intensive because getting all transaction details for last 5 years takes some time to generate and send to the requested customer. You might have faced the same situation when you trying to access last 5 year transaction in your net banking. Whenever you are requesting your transaction history for last 5 year or last 10 years, right? You will send the request and wait for the report to generate. So in the online transaction, you can able to see that after you submit the request, it will give a pop up message stating that please visit after some time to download your report. Okay, because these transactions are required high resource intensive to generate the report. Hope it's clear. So let's discuss scalability related data. Who is the owner of this data? Performance team is supposed to capture the future user volume and growth. Let's suppose this year we are having like a thousand user right in our application. What could be the next workload in the next year? What is the workload for n plus 2 year? Right? If n is the current year. Who will give this data? It is a stakeholder or a business owner or a client. Let's suppose, take example, there is a 100% increase in user load annually. Let's, this year it is 1000 year, next year it should be 2000 year. So, whenever you are designing the workload modeling, you need to consider 1000 user for load testing and 2000 user for scalability testing. Let's discuss workload related data. Who is the owner? Performance team is supposed to capture the application usage patterns and transactional volumes like peak hours. For each performance critical business transaction is captured. Okay. Who will give this data? We can get this data by interviewing the clients or analyzing the existing production log. Okay, our main motive here is to find out the transactional volume for each transaction like transaction per hour. Let's take an example of a Gmail application where we can able to find out how many transactions per hour. These values are tentative values so don't consider these are not the actual values. So in Gmail application we have like a transactions and we have find out transaction per hour. Let's suppose in login, login is one of our critical transaction in Gmail, right? We have found out the total transactional volume per hour is 2000. And the same way we have find out the check email. This is also one of the critical transaction in Gmail application. And we have find out transactional volume per hour is 1500, right? This way we need to find out the workload related data. The question will be in your mind why we are selecting peak hours. If your application handle peak load, then it will run in any other load. That's the reason we always take this workload related data in peak hours. The last point is data related to response time and other matrices. Who is the owner? PT team is supposed to capture the expected response time related data. For example, let's suppose PT team need to be discussed with business and find out what could be the response time for each kind of generic activity. For example, like navigate between screens, it might be one second, saving data might be one second, retrieving data might be one second, but retrieving 500 of rows might be a two second, retrieving like thousands of rows might be a three second. So this kind of value need to be determined by discussing with business and these things should be noted in part of data related to response time. Hope all these parameters need to take into consideration when you are collecting NFR details for a particular project. Hope you enjoy the sessions. Please let me know your feedback in the comment so that I can able to respond to your queries and feel free to let me know if you want to cover any part of this NFR which is missed. So I am happy to cover in the next tag. Thank you. Have a great day.